Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to the second in our series of partnership with Digital Boost. Uh, my name is Patrick O'Shaughnessy. I'm the Industry Development Manager for Visit Scotland. Last week, we did our first webinar, which was uh, delivered by Chris Greenwood, our Senior Insights Manager, giving us some really valuable insights into our visitors' confidence and intentions helping you as, as businesses to look at uh, the products you deliver, uh, how you communicate and how you market and how you might change how you approach things. This week, we're going to dive deeper into how you might market now. So you Scottish tourism businesses, what you could be doing next, what you could be doing now, in fact. So today we want to give you a little bit more insight. We want to give you some pr practical examples of what you can do and also how we within Visit Scotland are planning to market over the next short term. Fiona Holmes joins us today, Marketing Manager for Visit Scotland to deliver the presentation. Before I hand over to Fiona, I would just like to encourage you, those of you on the webinar, to ask any questions, so use the chat function on the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen to fire in questions as and when you think of them. And we will, we're will we planning to give some time at the end of the session to go through those questions and answer as many as possible. So Fiona, thank you very much. Thanks, Patrick. We know that Scots and the wider UK market will be the first to recover, so today I want to give you an update on market insights, what we know about Scots and the wider UK audience. I'll then give some insight into what we know about UK audiences' travel intentions and share our new audience segmentation. Then looking at top tips on marketing best practice and how to reach the UK domestic market on your website, through a database and social and distribution. And finally, an update on our Visit Scotland domestic marketing plans. To start, I just wanted to highlight the importance of the GB market to Scotland in any normal year. I'll refer to GB rather than UK here, as we're using insights from the Great Britain Tourism Survey, which includes Scotland, England and Wales data. In 2019, 80% of all overnight visits and 56% of all overnight spend in Scotland was by residents of Great Britain. This equates to 13.8 million trips and £3.2 billion pounds in spend. Scots make up a significant proportion of those visits. In 2019, 55.7% of all domestic overnight trips and 43.7% of all that domestic overnight spend was by residents of Scotland, equating to £7.7 .7 million, pounds, million overnight trips sorry, and £1.4 billion pounds in spend by Scots overnight visitors. So what do we know about the Scots overnight visitor? These stats are taken from the Great Britain Tourism Survey for 2019, so it's looking at the profile pre-COVID but we'll take a look at some of the core and changed behaviours as a result of the pandemic later on. We know that the top motivators for Scots to take an overnight break in Scotland are for the scenery and the landscape, the closeness to home and to get away from it all. We know that they are most likely to take a short break of between one and three nights, although almost a quarter do take longer breaks. We know seasonal variations in the volume of domestic tourism are much less dramatic than in international tourism. So Scots do take overnight visits in Scotland year round. And in terms of regions, Scots visitors are likely to travel more widely across Scotland due to that proximity and closeness to home. The Scots markets are also hugely important for day trips, which are a big part of Scottish tourism. In 2019, there were 133.6 million day trips taken, 86% of which were by Scots residents. And of the £5.8 billion pounds in Spain that day trips contributed to the visitor economy, 77% came from Scots. 
Top activities for a day trip in 2019 were visiting friends and family, going out for a meal, undertaking outdoor leisure activities, and general days out to explore an area. After Scotland, England is our biggest market in terms of overnight visitor volume and spend, in particular the regions of London and South East, North West, Yorkshire and the Humber, and the North East. Looking at behaviours of the wider GB market, from 2019 we can see in terms of seasonality, July to September has the highest percent of trips. But similar to the Scots market, it's good to know our visitors from the rest of Great Britain do travel year round to Scotland. They also tend to take shorter breaks with 62% visiting for one to three nights, but 30% did take longer breaks of up to a week in 2019. They're also likely to travel more widely across Scotland regions. The insight I've shared so far refers to the visitor stats from 2019. Last year, of course, was very different, so it has been key for us to gain insight into the changing behaviour of the UK market. In collaboration with the other national tourist boards, we commissioned tracking research to measure UK residents' holiday intentions and actions throughout the pandemic. The reports are all available on visitscotland.org and I'll share some of the latest insights now. The latest tracker report is from the 8th of January, covering survey results from the 18th to the 23rd of December. This was just prior to the current lockdown announcement, so it's worth bearing in mind the vol volatility of the results relative to the circumstances and what's happening in the news. Looking at consumer sentiment in the UK market at that time, there was additional negative shifts in people's attitude, with two thirds of the UK adult population feeling the worst is still to come, a continuation of the trend that had been seen over the past few waves of research. As a result, unsurprisingly, we also saw a decline in travel intentions take a short break by the end of March. However, positively, confidence does rise for trips in spring and definitely into summer from the UK market. And with the rollout of the vaccine underway, we're hopeful that travel confidence will continue to grow. UK travel operators are already reporting encouraging bookings for later in the year, interestingly from older markets who will receive their vaccines first. In terms of destination consideration, of those intending to visit in spring, South West England is top destination of choice, followed positively by Scotland, in line with other English regions. It's worth noting for Scots visitors, Scotland is the top consideration quite considerably. People intend to visit countryside and villages and traditional coastal seaside town for a spring break, which perhaps signals a return to normal seasonal leisure trips. For planning and booking, there's a reluctance to commit in line with low confidence around being able to take a trip. For spring, of those intending to take a trip between April to June, just 25% of trips had been planned and 18% booked. However, as confidence grows, it will be an opportunity to capitalise on the UK market while international travel remains uncertain. Some core behaviours of the UK market have been strengthened through the pandemic and we've also seen some new trends emerging. Preference to travel in a private car has always been the top mode of travel for UK visitors, and we're seeing this even more so now due to the flexibility to change plans and the ease of physical distancing. It's also worth noting that perception of places being hard to get to is cited as a barrier to some UK visitors coming to Scotland. So highlighting directions and showing how easy it is to get to your business or region remains important. Booking preference continues to be split between booking direct with provider and an online travel agent such as Expedia, so online presence is key to being discoverable. Value for money has and will continue to be a motivation for UK audiences, while flexibility to make amendments to bookings has also become increasingly important. Looking at some changed behaviours, the planning and booking window has become much shorter, Previously, we saw UK audiences planning five months ahead and booking four months before travel. 
And last year, as a result of the pandemic, people were booking within as little as a week, one week of travel. Highlighting last minute availability is something to consider in messaging for this audience. Safety and reassurance top the list amongst potential visitors as the top priority for a trip. So it's really important to communicate any hygiene and safety measures that you've implemented via your website and social channels and updating any business listings you have. And lastly, there's been a clear shift towards outdoor spaces. Visiting the natural outdoors, rest and relaxation and outdoor pursuits are desirable with people more cautious to visit busy places. In line with recognising the changing consumer behaviours, new audience segmentation has been developed for the UK market. The six segments can be split into two groups, COVID cautious and COVID confident. And again, these are all going to be updated on visitscotland.org with the full details. The first of our COVID cautious segments are cautious but content, who make up 13% of the UK population. They are the most concerned about catching COVID, but generally settled and content with a restrained lifestyle. They will not return to travel until it's absolutely safe to do so and will require reassurances about safety measures. Currently constrained segment make up about 18% of the UK population. The worry about catching COVID has brought a temporary halt to trip taking for these financially confident and ambitious early adopters. They're unlikely to travel until risk of catching COVID has been significantly reduced, but they will be ready to reconnect with their previous lifestyle when some degree of normality returns. Struggling represents 26% of the UK population. Those who have been hit hard by COVID, active decisions about financial risk or aspirational spending are a luxury that they can't afford at the moment. The funds simply aren't available. They're also more concerned than average about catching COVID. And then looking towards our COVID confident segments, protective but pragmatic represent 10% of the UK population. They are characterised by everything in moderation. It reflects their attitude to COVID and the need to balance the health of the nation and the health of the economy. They will only travel if they feel it's responsible to do so and should be targeted with messaging that taps into goals, quality and value rather than pure indulgence just for the sake of it. Less to lose make up 26% of the UK population. They are spontaneous and optimistic for the future, even though their current circumstances are fairly limiting. They believe that we should learn to live with COVID. Fewer barriers to domestic travel than other segments, but financial constraints may limit the scope of their spend. This segment was also the largest to take holidays or short breaks in Scotland during the opening of tourism last year. Aspirational messages about what they and their lifestyle can become rather than what they are now are expected to resonate well with this, with these visitors. And life goes on, 7% of the UK population. The final segment believe protecting the economy should now be the focus. These well-off individuals who are willing to pay a premium for top-notch experiences. The risks of the COVID virus has been overstated in their estimation. And the main barrier to travel is lack of things to do on their trip. They're not particularly concerned about catching the virus. They're comfortable with risk and increasingly frustrated with the restrictions, so they will be seeking a sense of freedom and release from the constraints of COVID. As well as considering audience segments, it's also important to be aware of the evolving consumer journey. This is outlined here from our Modern Humans study, which is a piece of research involving a two-week qualitative study recording thoughts and activities relating to considering planning or preparing for a holiday. And it was done with a cross-section of first-time visitors and lapsed visitors. What is outlined is that over the course of planning a holiday, someone might be influenced by hundreds or even thousands of different things online and offline that contribute to their end decision. A lot of it is, of course, passive, especially at the idea accumulation stage. So the more noise we can all collectively make about Scotland, the better in order to turn a visit from an idea into a consideration and ultimately a plan.
With those insights in mind, I'll now chat through some tips to reach the UK audience and what we're doing at Visit Scotland. First and foremost is making sure you have an online presence. 90% of research and 80% of bookings are completed by travellers online. So it's crucial to review and optimise your digital footprint to make sure you're discoverable by potential visitors. This can be across your own channels like your website, email and social media, but also via other businesses like online travel agents. Keeping all listings up to date with practical information around opening times and availability, as well as any health and safety measures you have implemented is key to reassure potential UK visitors. I'll talk through some key tips and tactics for each of the channels here, and there are links at the end of this presentation to further resources on visitscotland.org to help you make the most of each platform. Firstly, looking at your website, using your website to facilitate online bookings is key, especially now that circumstances require more pre-bookings. At the very least, your website should signpost to how you can book, for example, if you're signed up to online intermediaries. Also use your website to tell your business's story, selling what makes your business unique and why visitors should come. It's worth ensuring your website is mobile optimised so that the pages appear correctly when accessed on a mobile. 96% of people use their phone to find the answer when a question arises. Once your website is up and running, it's also important to make sure that it is discoverable. The way to do this is to use search engine optimization, SEO, which affects where you appear in search engine results such as Google and Bing. The way to start is to utilize keyword research, which you can do at your own keyword research by using free tools such as Google AdWords or Keyword Planner. Email marketing, building a database of warm contacts interested in hearing about your product is a great way for you to keep in touch and share updates on your business such as new tours or special rates. During the pandemic, insights showed people were still keen to hear from brands, in particular around any changes implemented. And having a, an email database is a, a key way to do this. You can look to grow your database in a number of ways, for example, by encouraging sign up via an opt in from your website or social channels or when someone makes a booking. Of course, collation and maintenance of a database all needs to be done in compliance to GDPR. Ensuring that information you share via email is relevant to the audience is also crucial. For Scots, for example, this is their home, so they won't necessarily see themselves as a visitor. So your messaging should try and reflect that. For example, inviting Scots to experience what's on their doorstep. Other relevant information information to share could be collaborating and supporting other local businesses to highlight the wider regional offering. While the domestic market are likely to know their local area, they may not be as familiar with other regions. And a trip will become a more appealing proposition if there's a few things on offer. So it's good to cross promote other businesses in your area. Social media, using social channels such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook to engage with existing and to attract new visitors. Look to tailor post, posts to the social channel that you're using and messaging to the visitors you're trying to attract. VisitScotland.org has some examples of the type of posts that work well for us at Visit Scotland. They tend to be stunning or unique imagery and video footage with an interesting fact or posing a question that then um, obviously encourages engagement. Use a mix of messages, always be relevant and provide inspiration in your own tone of voice, but test and learn what your audience responds to and what time is best to post. And crucially, learn from others and share relevant posts. For example, with ourselves at Visit Scotland or your local tourism body, follow our accounts and see what works well and join in the conversation using relevant hashtags, like hashtag only in Scotland. In addition to what you can do on your channels, you can also think about getting your business offering out there via others. Online travel agents have the power to provide higher search engine results. And as we saw from the tracker results earlier, UK audiences tend to either book direct or with online travel agents. So it's worth considering if and which ones you might want to use. Again, we have more information on visitscotland.org around the various options available for the UK market. 
the likes of the Expedia Group, which includes Hotels.com, is one of the biggest players for the UK market. Keep in the loop with what our sales and your local destination marketing organisations are doing and how you can get involved from the likes of free business listings to trade events in order to connect your business with tour operators. And then destination management companies and wholesalers are specialised in transport and accommodation packages offered by tour operators. They know how to sell products and if you have a relevant product can greatly help with distribution of your product through B2B2C marketing. Our domestic marketing activity for the last year has had to be very agile to adapt to the changing circumstances. Flexibility was and of course continues to be at the core of all of our plans at Visit Scotland and we're closely monitoring the situation and liaising with communities, local tourism and sector groups to ensure we get the messaging right to best support the recovery of Scottish tourism. Scots and the wider UK market will, as we saw last year, be the first visitors to return when restrictions are lifted. Our key objective at Visit Scotland is to support the rapid recovery for Scottish tourism, to inspire visits and bookings when it's safe to travel and encourage regional and seasonal spread. For Scots, our messaging will continue to be around supporting local businesses and encouraging responsible travel. For example, looking out for local communities, moving on if places are really busy, and buying local. While the rest of the UK and Ireland, it's about raising awareness of Scotland and the different regional offerings to inspire them to plan their trip. We have a multi-touch point strategy to reach these key audience groups from our own channels like our website, email and social media, to earn channels sharing the Scotland message via PR, media relations, intermediaries and, and various partners sharing our content. And then via paid media, using a mix of platforms. Digital and paid social allows us the most flexibility around targeting and also the ability to pause, while press and on-demand gives us wider audience reach and working with OTAs like Expedia encourages conversion. Our recovery activity is a continuation of our Only in Scotland campaign, which is all about promoting and celebrating the uniqueness of experiences you can have in Scotland. We have put storytelling at the very heart of our strategy and working within a creative and content calendar framework, these stories are shaped by the motivators and emotional drivers that a visitor is looking to get from a holiday in Scotland. An easy way to get involved is to think about what makes your offering business or business a unique experience and promote it through your social media channels using hashtag only in Scotland. The more positive and inspiring stories we can collectively share, the more we will raise the profile of Scotland as a must visit destination. We also have a huge amount of content assets that are available to support you with this from blog posts and videos to our digital media library, which gives access to a wealth of imagery and video content. It's quick, easy and free to register at assets.visitscotland.com. We will continue to share our marketing plans as these develop on visitscotland.org. If you haven't already done so, applying for the We're Good to Go logo is another thing to do which can help reassure potential UK visitors. The logo signifies you are following the government's COVID reopening guidelines. And as we saw from the intention trackers, there is still a lot of nervousness around um, taking trips from the UK market. So anything you can do like this to communicate that you have implemented specific measures will help to ease those concerns. We are good to go logo can also be incorporated into your business listing on visitscotland.com. If you don't already have a business listing, you can sign up to create one for free at visitscotland.org. The current circumstances have further enhanced the use of online channels. So just to reiterate, it's obviously never been more important to review and optimise your digital footprint. Keeping your website and other listings like Visit Scotland and Google up to date with latest opening hours and any COVID safe measures you've implemented is going to be key. And as restrictions differ per region, it's also good to share what the current guidelines mean for your business and what visitors can expect. VisitScotland.org again has a useful COVID section to help with this. 
these final couple of slides include links to visitscotland.org pages that I've referenced throughout the presentation. Most are from our digital skills section and are a great way to find practical how-to guides to better promote your business. Thank you very much. I hope that was useful and I think we'll now take some questions. Thank you, Fiona. Um, that was a really insightful presentation. Um, just to, so there's still time. We have some questions have come in whilst uh, Fiona was, was presenting. We'll answer those, look to answer those, but you still have time to add anything just now. Um, just to say, I think one or two people have, have asked, we will be sharing this presentation on visitscotland.org. We'll, we'll upload it uh, as a video and we'll share that link with you uh, as soon as that. That normally takes seven to ten working days for us to do that. After this evaluation, as we um, are doing this as a partnership with, with Digital Boost, there'll be an, an evaluation sent out to you, which would I'd really appreciate if you could take the time to uh, indicate uh, what value you, you took out of this, this webinar. Our next session is, is will be uh, on the 4th of February, and it's going to cover off the fundamentals uh, of digital and giving you a little bit more of a drill down into what, in some instances, some of the questions that have been asked today. And um, just looking at, at, it was great, I can see questions firing in left, right and centre now. So um, I'll, I'll have a look at the ones that um, came in earlier on. If you know, I know you're primed to take some questions, but I'll take the first couple of them, um, primarily because they're not, not around marketing, but. Um, there was a question to say that was there for the assets that you mentioned on um, visitscotland.org in fact are they the same as on the trade visit scotland website no they're slightly different they are um they're, they're not as focused on trade they're for a broader consumer audience and will include as as fiona mentioned access to the imagery library which can be really useful if you'll have your own images, but you can also use some images which are regionally applicable, which is really, really useful, I would hope. And there's a question around, uh, what's the evidence of Expedia being the main OTA? Um, never had a booking from them, uh, and does that contradict the book direct message? So firstly, um, Expedia wouldn't be the largest OTA, in fact, it's booking.com, and uh, I suppose, even before that, step one is that we within Visit Scotland absolutely recognise that direct booking is is the best. It's the most, it's the most profitable. It's what all of you should be organising to to maximise. However, you it, it, you have to. Our research tells us that up to 65% of visitors utilise online travel agents to make a booking because they've got such huge budgets that they have managed to, to um, create a loyalty with certain visitors who will not book on any other platform. So it's really about saying, yes, do as much good, strong marketing as possible yourselves, which uh, Fiona's indicated some, some good tips, but also consider for any new audiences that you use a mix of uh, OTAs as well. Test them. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Um, but generally speaking, there's an opportunity there for you to get new business, which is so important for your growth. So it's not about um, a contradiction. It's about using it as a mix uh, of, of platforms that you could you could utilize. Another question we got was um, around the increase in motorhomes and caravans uh, and whether we, we would be providing more facilities for those. Uh, yes, there's been, I think it was, uh, 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 they're up to 67% increase in the purchase of motorhomes in the last uh, quarter of the, of the, uh, of the lockdown. And um, we, uh, or rather the Scottish Government have provided a significant funding called the Regional Tourism Inf Infrastructure Fund, uh, which allows areas to apply 
to to improve the infrastructure of of their area the question actually was to say you know whether we would be providing more of those facilities so we're giving the funding that we're managing on behalf of scottish government allows more of those facilities in the most recent round it was up to 13 applications looking to improve those facilities but again we would always say that there are um excellent holiday parks uh, around scotland uh, which uh, we we as an organization always direct our visitors to look at first because they provide excellent facilities for motorhome and caravan that would be our default so um fiona if i can uh, look at the other one was around an international question so it was more that um the, uh, one of the the people on the webinar said that 95 percent of their client base is north american the rest of the world um, is there any point in trying to market for later in 2021? Um, what's our advice in that respect? Fiona, any thoughts? Yeah, I think I think it's still it's still good to keep Scotland top of mind. It's obviously everything that we're doing is in alignment with the the Scottish government's travel restrictions. So I guess I guess it's what what, what I've just talked through is obviously the UK market. So it's potentially looking at can you do anything in the meantime when you know that. North America visitors can't get here at the moment. Is it an opportunity for you to to look at Scots and the the rest of the UK market to to try and get them to come to your business in the meantime and and grow your audience section that way? But I think what we're doing at Visit Scotland is definitely still keeping um, Scotland top of mind with the North America market. We've got a, a team that look after the various international markets, and they are still working really closely with. Um, trade partners and intermediaries so that when the time is right and they, they can start promoting they, they will do but it's potentially an opportunity to to reach out to the UK audience at this point. Great thank you Fiona another one for you um, one of the attendees is based in Lossy Mount Murray and I think the question is um, when you refer to Grampians or Highlands where does Murray fit in that either is it Highlands or is it Aberdeenshire? Um, it's all our, our research that I presented at the beginning is all from the Great Britain Tourism Survey, so I can I can certainly look into that and send what what bit it would fall into for you. Great. Um, another question. I think this is one for me. Uh, I'm having a website designed, and how do I register it with Visa Scotland? And um, if you go on to visascotland.org, there is a, a link there with how how do you work with Visa Scotland. It allows you to list your business for free on visitscotland.com, uh, visit which has over 20 million visits a year. So, so well worth uh, doing that. Um, sorry, I'm reading these questions. I haven't seen them before. Um, okay. So someone is asking about slides. We've, we've sort of looked that, covered that off. Um, And I think there is, yes, there's, there's, someone's asking any funding. So, so a few questions around funding. Um, Visit Scotland has been tasked with uh, managing nine of the, uh, I think it's a total of 15 funding streams uh, from the Scottish Government. We're launch, we've launched a couple of those already uh, and we're aiming to uh, um, provide access to the, the all nine funds uh, from the middle of February. So our, our whole focus, we've pulled over 100 staff to focus on that to make sure that one, we've got it, um, that the actual application process is as simple and as applicable by sector as possible. We're working with each of the uh, sector leads uh, to, to make sure that happens and then fundamentally to get the funding out as quickly as possible. Um, a question, how do you balance local concerns about visitors with encouraging visitors coming back when the time is right? Uh, Fiona, sorry, I've, I've, uh, are you able to sort of pick yeah, that yeah, one up? Yeah, I, guess, I guess throughout everything, and that is the, the really tricky balance. We're working really closely with um, the local DMOs, communities, groups, partners, just to make sure, and, and yourselves as the industry, to get to get that feedback and make sure that we are promoting places that are, are ready to welcome visitors back. Um, 
and all of our activity, all of our marketing activity last year and what we're planning for for now is flexibility is at the heart of that. So if there is a, if there is an issue, we can easily turn something off quickly. But obviously planning it in to be, to begin with to make sure that we are promoting the places that um, are ready to welcome visitors. That's great. This is another one. I think it's the same international question, but with a little bit more um, the, appreciating that we're focusing on on the domestic market. Uh, will there be opportunities within, v, within VS for the international market? And I suppose I, Fiona, I can just sort of touch on this: is that we're we're still actively looking to um, to to, to uh, improve and develop our relationships with the international buyers. And most recently, we had Scotland Reconnect. That was at the end of last year, where we brought 250 buyers and 250 uh, businesses such as yourselves together uh, virtually. And it was extremely successful, such that we're looking to redo that in um, in April. So that, that's ongoing and planning for a, another virtual version. So those sort of opportunities we'll be communicating out to you. Uh, if, if you haven't signed up to uh, visit Scotland's e-update, that, that's probably the best way to make sure you don't miss out on opportunities such as that, such as this. Um, let me, I must make sure because I, I concentrate so hard on these questions, a quite small screen, but I, I, I look quite um, concerned. I, I need to smile a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned older audiences um, optimizing for spring summer trips um, during due, due to receiving the vaccine. Could you please expand on what what do you know about this? Yeah, I think what we're seeing that for the UK market, coach operators are obviously quite a big um, audience, and we're, what we're hearing is that now that the vaccine rollout is underway, and it's obviously starting with the older markets first is that they are then getting that travel confidence is building up for them and, and actually they, they see themselves, the bookings are starting to come in for later in the year, um, which is good news. And I guess it's interesting because it's that balance between that older market and obviously potentially higher risk to COVID, but they are the ones that we're seeing once they've got their vaccine, they're ready, they're what they want to, to get out and, and back on um, holidays and, and Scotland, again, we're keen to keep Scotland top of mind for them um, and actually it's been in the, the media I don't know whether you've seen anything recently like um, National Express are reporting back on on that as well and um, that they are seeing bookings from that that older market uh, that that said I guess what in our, our COVID audience segments that I presented on it's looking at like, when we when we look back at the insights that our VB tracker gave us last year it's that less to lose segment that, that we're coming, which are, are predominantly younger. Um, so it's good, I guess, to see that that older market, who are probably our more traditional audience for the UK market, are, are starting to get that confidence back for, for this year. And I think this, uh, this next question sort of links with that as well. Um, for city centre, traditionally busy venues, uh, what's the best market segment? A content theme to focus on given the shift to quiet countryside and outdoors? Yeah, so at the moment, and I guess for our marketing activity, it's very much a, a split focus on that. We'll, we'll continue to, to market um, rural breaks as well as city breaks, and it's, it's looking at what are those unique experiences that are, are in the cities that we can bring people back to, and actually Interestingly, in the, the tracker, so that these weekly trackers are being updated on visitscotland.org, um, but cities are coming out as as where people want to, they do want to travel to the city, and I guess it's, it's I think it, it will be both. Uh, it's pushing, I guess, what we're trying to do is push what the, the experiences are to the, to the market, what, I guess, maybe not focusing so much on the, the busyness, obviously, as but looking at what what are, what is your business, what is the unique experience that you're offering um, in the city, and focus on that. Thanks, Fiona. The other is, is again is I suppose is how what is do we have another um, section of of insights coming? Is it a rolling campaign? The interest being is is there an impact uh, from the vaccine in terms of confidence uh, for people to 
um, to travel as a result of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're, the tracker is continuing and the latest results actually should be up next week, I think it is. It was just slightly too, too late for this presentation, but it should be on visitscotland.org next week, I believe. Good. Yeah, thanks Fiona. The the um, there's a point here I made about online travel agents and the commission. They get someone made made a point that there's a Scottish uh, marketing business which has launched Curiosity. Uh, it's it's purely for, uh, for experiences, but they're they're not commission based. So anyone who's not a, an experience might anyone who is an experience might want to uh, look that up to see if that if that is something that's right right for them. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I uh, I met a rep at the ASHC conference. I mean, I suppose rep that means someone from Visit Scotland. Uh, they mentioned that some local people are there to give some personal guidance. Uh, is that still the case? Absolutely. So, if you are looking for some help and support, either through your marketing or quality. Or some help with digital. Just go on again to visitscotland.org. There's there's uh, a section in there on if you look for your industry relationship manager. Uh, we have a team who are who are actively reaching out, but but no harm in you reaching out if you've got a particular question to to, to get some help. Um, uh, we are in our 60s, so not social media media savvy. Where can we get help with the use of social media? Um, so. We, in terms of that, this is a series of up to 10 webinars that we're doing with, with uh, Digital Boost. One of the future uh, social media webinars, or sorry, one of the future webinars we're going to do is around social media. It's at intermediate level, but what you could, you could do in the interim is have a look at um, our uh, Visit Scotland.org digital skills. There are some really good articles and help in there for you starting out on social media so so that's to uh, to help you out um this one i think is is for you fiona with lots of questions is you know um you noted the less to lose and life goes on segments are people who believe we need to learn to live with covid and we need to prioritize the economy. So those are what we surely need to be careful about pandering to these views, which go against the Scottish government's approach to dealing with the pandemic. That's a tricky one. Sorry, I'm reading those as I come along. So um, yeah, no, absolutely. And I suppose when we're looking at audience segments, it's, it's to split the the market into what what people's views are. But yeah, from from our side, it's 100% following the Scottish government's guidelines in terms of what what we're seeing when. Um, and obviously looking to to just make sure that we're primed and ready to get those visitors back when it's safe to do so. So the audience segments is more looking at what what the split is between what people what people's behaviours and and attitudes are in the market. But yeah, no, absolutely, we we are fully um, aligned with the the government. I think there's a question here about you know the the and I think other businesses have mentioned it to me is that. Despite the fact we're in lockdown, they're still receiving international bookings. And this is a question from the Highland Games: Should we should we lock ticketing just purely to the UK? And I think that's a difficult question to to answer. But it's it's you you have a responsibility to make sure that your your guests are safe. The uh, Scottish government's um, advice um, is is that. It, it's it's yeah travel restrictions will continue for some time within visit scotland we're we're and certainly what i've been hearing from businesses is that um, it, it will be up to um up to easter or even to the start of may before we can seriously start looking at uh slowly coming out of lockdown how 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 likely that international markets will be able to to come to to Scotland um, for this summer it, it is low, and it really is just about awareness. So I suppose uh, that that ultimately does become a, a a business decision you have to make yourself. But well, that would be the the, the framework we would say to you to, to think in terms of of, of looking at. Um, 
Republic of Ireland marketing part of the multi touch plan is paid for digital VS promotion. Yeah. So I this, this business have adopted to digital. Um, what do I need to, to contact be added, added to the list of paid for options? Sorry, I'm, I should. I'm trying to figure out what this question is for um, reference. You can part of the multi touch plan is paid for digital VS. I've invested in a company only zero touch green guides for Glasgow. Who do I need to contact? Add to this read for options. Sorry, yes, there's a few of these questions that we don't we're not able to answer on online. Um, we'll pick them up afterwards and get back to you individually because uh, we want to sort of ask questions that help the audience in general. Uh, but but do I reassure that we'll get back to you on, on those particularly. Um, if you're with an OTA, does it affect your listing on Google? Does it take you off the top spot? Um, I'll, I'll answer that, Fiona, just in terms of. So, so yes, so so Google search is a really complex thing. It's fair to say online travel agents have got a massive budget and they are likely to, and this is something that really can be very uh, antagonizing for, for, a, for a business, is they can purchase your name. It's legal to do this in terms of their paid ad activity. So they can, in some instances, be the first to, re, uh, to return on on a on a search for your business name so again it's about you making sure that you optimize as best as possible to make sure you're as high on the on the, on the page as possible and you might if you want to depending on how much you are seeing that occurring is you might want to do some paid advertising of your own ultimately uh, the likes of facebook will always return the most relevant search and you you as the business will um Will, will be the most relevant. So that's that's that, that's one of the options you might look at. Um, okay, I think we've answered or, or asked quite a few questions. I think the 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 composition of the people asking has been uh, questions have been tremendous. So well, thank you very much for that. We'll have a look through all of the other questions just to see. Uh, if there's any specific individual personal business requests, but hopefully we've covered off some interesting topics, questions and answers, which so you're able to get some good benefit from today. As I said, we'll be sending an evaluation out to you directly after this and look forward to perhaps seeing you on our other webinars coming up, the next of which is on the 4th. Many thanks.